Right, so we are now preparing to uh, put all the valves etc back in the cylinder head. So the cylinder head is back from the engineers, so it's been blast cleaned, vapor blasted or aqua blasted. Um, so vapor blasting and aqua blasting are the same thing, they're just called two different names. Um, so that's using um, uh, a fine bead, normally sort of a glass bead, very fine glass beads like sand in water. That's why it's called aqua blasting. Um, it's not quite as abrasive as dry blasting, so that's why it's good for our. Uh, that's why all the uh, cases, etc., they've been aqua blasted or vapor blasted. Okay, so that's done. Uh, back to the engineers. So, what have the engineers done? So, they have fitted all new valve guys for me, which is brilliant. And uh, they've also uh, and then recut all the valve seats. Um, because when you put new valve guides in, you know, the, the angle changes very uh, subtly uh, that the valve um, goes in. And if you don't recut the seat, you know, then the valve won't, some might not close properly. So they've cut that. They've also skimmed the head because like the top of the barrels, apparently the head was also warped as well. So, uh, you know, it does the head, the head and the top of the barrels was warped. So, you know, one reason why the thing was probably leaking so much oil from around the head area. Um, then I have, since it's come back, then I have uh, gone through and I've run a tap down all of the uh, threads to check they're okay or they're all the UNC quarter inch threads. Uh, one of them's got a helicoil in, which is fine, and the others are all okay. I've also checked, double checked the threads on the spark plugs because obviously they need to be 100%. And again, the vapor blasting in that it can, uh, it shows it can show up if there's a damaged thread. Um, but we're all okay. The engineers have looked at, uh, as well, so that's all okay. But we have um, run a tap down all the threads; they're all fine. So um i think we're all that's all, everything is now ready to uh start putting the valves back in so we've got brand new valves inlet valves and exhaust valves inlet valves slightly bigger we've got um some in uh, some uh, valve guide oil seals we've got new uh springs which are double springs so there there's an inner and an outer spring and then we've got the um spring caps the spring bases and the collets so we'll be um we'll be going through uh, fitting those shortly uh the thing to note is that um there are painted ends on the valve springs and generally if you have a painted end it goes um down uh, it goes it, it goes against the head um okay so when these go on they go on the other way Round, so they'll be with the painted end against the head. Um, basically, if you've got springs with a tight end, um, a tightly wound end, that always goes to the head. Okay, oh yes. Um, so we've got these um, uh, valve uh, these uh, valve um, stem oil seals, and um, I, I've decided I am going to put them. I'm going to put them on the inlet, which is standard. But I'm also going to put them on the exhaust, um, which you don't have to do. But really, for belt and braces, I've decided to to put them on the exhaust. Um, I think I've said before, but basically the thinking is that when the inlet valve is opened, um, the piston goes down and sucks in the uh, petrol and air mixture from the carburetor, but it can also inadvertently suck in oil down the side of the valve. Um, and that's why you'd have a, a seal on there. And that's why one reason of having new um, guides. 
opposite to that on the exhaust when the exhaust valve opens then of course the piston is on the uh, going up and is pushing everything out of the cylinder so that if if oil does go down um it will actually just be uh, pushed out uh unburnt rather than being sucked in and burnt however you know i still worry that oil gets down and uh, and gets into the combustion chamber so um I've decided to fit them. The downside is that, of course, you do want some lubrication, very a small amount of lubrication on the valve between the valves and valve guides. And so, of course, by fitting the stem seals, you can stop any oil going down. Um, again, it's one of those is opinion or whatever, but I generally I do fit the seals to the exhausts. I've not had a problem with my bikes. I'm not saying which is right or wrong, but that's what i'm going to do okay so uh we'll get on and start fitting the valves oh yeah uh, i don't know if i said just earlier the he's cut the uh the engineers cut all the valves and he said i don't need to um sort of grind them in normally you have grinding paste and you would just grind the valve in but he said he's cut them and they're perfect and they don't actually need grinding in you can just fit the valve straight so uh, that's wonderful news so um, I don't need to grind the valves in. Okay, uh, we'll get on and start fitting the uh, fitting the valves. Okay, so uh, I'm going to fit the valves now to the head. I fitted one already. So um, got the valve and. Uh, I'm going to go put a bit of uh, assembly lube on the stem. Put it in from underneath. This is one of the inlet valves. Then put on the cylinder the, the, the spring base plate, which goes around the stem. There we go. Then uh, one of the uh, oil seals, valve stem oil seals, which goes over the valve stem. There you go. And where Kate says a little groove on the valve guide, and just make sure that it's located in that groove. The, the foot of the oil seal is in that groove nicely. Then we have the uh, valve springs. And I've checked with the supplier now these are in fact in even spring which is why i've been looking at them going boss side trying to work out which end was the compressed end the, the reason being there isn't one okay so these can actually be fitted either way up the convention is painted end down or and or if if the springs are progressive so if there is one end that the coils are tighter then the tighter coils go to the cylinder head face so the idea being that the you know the top can spring a bit whereas the the bottom is tight these springs will go either way up both the inner and outer spring um, but i'll fit them facing downwards because uh, with the paint downwards because that's the convention and then the spring cap goes on there then we've got the valve spring compressor so we open the compressor, put that top end, that end on the spring and the cut on the bottom of the valve and there's just a little bit of compression. And now I'm going to, I think you can see that, just going to wind up the uh, compressor. And as I do that, it pushes the spring lower and lower down at this end. And I'm going to wind it up until I can clearly see the groove where the collets are going to go. And if you're having trouble fitting the collets, it's normally because you haven't tightened the compressor enough. So if the collets won't go in, or more, off, more often than not, what happens is the first collet goes in and then the second one doesn't. And that's normally because you haven't tightened the compressor up enough. Okay. So 
then I'm going to go handheld, which is always a nightmare, but I think you'll be able to see better. So then uh, we get one of the collets. Okay, and uh, it's uh, sort of like funnel shaped, so the thin end at the bottom. And uh, if possible, whilst holding the camera, which is fairly impossible, I'll then try and put the first collet on the stem. There, and just and then, okay, to try and help it seat, I'll just move the valve spring compressor a bit. Trying to hold a camera and do this at the same time is, is a nightmare, so I can't do it. There, okay. So the first collet is now sitting around the valve stem. So I'll then get the second collet and then I shall try and pop that around the top of the valve stem. No, just uh, I can't really do it handheld, and I haven't got a tripod that will that will do this. Um, you know, I, you can hold it at this angle so you can see what's going on. I can't, I can't do it. Right, so basically, I'm going to just fiddle around with that collet. Uh, you can see it's sort of not in position, and try and poke it down so it's um, sort of facing facing the other collet there, and then we'll come back again. Okay, so we've got the uh, second collet now in position. Sort of underneath the, you know, there's a shoulder. There's this shoulder on the uh, valve stem. And so the collet's now sitting underneath that shoulder. So then I'm going to unwind the compressor and the spring will come up and trap the collets around the stem and we should be done. So we'll do that. On, I'll put this on tripod and we'll do that. Okay, so now I'm going to unwind the compressor. Just watching the collets to making sure they don't jump out, that they stay seated where they should be. Yeah. Then when we're nearly at the end, we can release the valve spring compressor. And there we have the valve in and the collet's holding in position. Soft, give it a belt. Get that ring. And that makes sure that the collets are properly seated. And there we have the valve fitted. So we've now got two valves in, and two inlet valves, yeah, and uh, so we're just going to carry on, finish the inlet valves and then put the, exactly the same with the exhaust valves. Yeah, there's one thing uh, that I meant to say to watch for, um, and that is when you're assembling, do make sure that you put the spring plate, the base plate on first, then fit the valve stem seal for the simple reason that uh, you can't get that uh, plate over the seal and if you put the seal in first a you can't get the plate over it but b from bitter experience you then got to try and get the seal off and it can be very, very difficult to prise the seal off the, uh, the valve guide without damaging it. So that's uh, so very important to remember. Just put that plate in first, then the oil seal, then the springs, etc. Otherwise, you, know, you could have to order a whole new set of oil seals if you're not careful. Okay, just a little, a little uh, thing to watch for there. Yeah, and one other thing before I put the rest of the valves in, these holes here, that's the, the drain holes uh, for the oil, because as you can see, there's nowhere for the oil. If those drain holes weren't there, these uh, sort of cups here that hold the valves would just fill up to such an extent that they'll actually be higher than the 
edge of the valve guide and obviously oil is going to pour down into the engine into the combustion chamber so that's why there are these oil ways and it's these oil ways that then come out of the head here that's why we've got six of them and then carry on down through the barrels and back into the crankcase and it's these oil ways that can leak um well obviously there's various places that can leak but you have to be careful um about these uh they're only drain holes but um you know they, they, they can leak especially from the the head uh if it's not sealed properly okay and there we have it all the uh all the valves are now in all looking uh, jolly good there we go, some nice new valves, exhaust valves, inlet valves, and uh, all ready, just about ready for us to put the uh, cylinder head uh, on the barrels.